I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Greg Meredith, the founder of the Archain Project. Greg, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's um, looking forward to our conversation. Likewise, if you could kick off the interview by explaining to the people that don't know yet, what is the Archain Project and what makes the Archain technology different in the blockchain space? Sure. So the big picture for Archain is that we are focused on uh, providing coordination technology uh, to begin to address the issues around climate change. Um, uh, governments and industry are moving too slowly, and so we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and get it done ourselves. And we see blockchain as one of the most important uh, factors for um, or technology um, uh, platforms for uh, doing that kind of coordination. Um, mm -hmm. Our chain is different, uh, not just in terms of its, its focus, <clears throat> but also in terms of its technology and its governance. Um, our technology is correct by construction. So whether you're talking about Rolang and our space, um, which provides uh, correct by construction, um, uh, smart contracting language and execution mechanism, as well as just as a storage and query model <laughs> uh, or you're talking about the correct by construction casper uh, proof of stake protocol um, uh, our aim is to provide um, a technological basis which is uh, um, gives a, a completely different um, level of security and uh, correctness to the mix um, uh, also, uh, we're, since we are focused on climate change, one of the things that we believe is fundamentally uh, or, or at, at, the, at the very center and core of, of uh, uh, what we need to do to change things uh, is, is our democratic governance model. So that's why we're a, co a cooperative. We begin with um, one member, one vote, and we recognize that from that place we might find uh, uh, different kinds of governance model that are going to fit our needs at different moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super interesting how our chain is uh, one of the only co-ops that we've talked to and you know and showcased on on the show. In the blockchain space, it seems like it's a bit of a unique model. You know, has it had advantages and has it worked in your in your favor so far for the team growing the project? Uh, yeah, so it, it definitely has advantages. Um, uh, well, it had some unexpected advantages. In particular, um, the the demand that uh, members, uh, you know, have real engagement in the co-op uh, puts us in a different relationship to the Howey test, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I wasn't thinking about that <laughs> yeah. when uh, when we when we launched the co-op. I was thinking about the fact that when I was at Oberlin College, you know, more than a quarter of the student population uh, uh, lived. Um, and worked in cooperatives. So we made all our own food. We made, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, and the farm co-op grew, grew its own vegetables, uh, milled its own wheat. Uh, and, and it's really, the, the, one of the biggest advantages is the spirit of engagement, um, which uh, keeps the, the R chain going. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the members uh, understand that, you know, it's, it's, it's us and it's only us <laughs> uh, that makes this work. Um, as opposed to it's them over there, they need to get it done. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like it's working pretty well so far. And your team did launch the mainnet at the beginning of this year after many years of work so far. So congratulations to that. Uh, but I, kn I know yeah, that we you- We were about a year late. <laughs> yeah, well, I know that you are a visionary and you're always looking five to 10 years in the future. So could you give a glimpse into how do you foresee our chain working in the real world in the next, you know, five or ten years. Uh, ab absolutely. So, so um, uh, you know, while our goals are uh, our, our climate and coordination technologies for responding to climate change, we recognize that you kind of have to crawl, walk, run. So, in the short term, what we want to do is uh, look to high transaction volume, low risk kinds of applications. Mm -hmm. uh, the entertainment sector and social media sectors. Those are really, really good examples, right? So, if you're, uh, if uh, our chain, for example, is already fast enough uh, and scalable enough to store audio data on chain, 
So uh, uh, we, we demonstrated uh, not only storing audio and delivering audio on chain, but uh, uh, that, that you can build some fairly compelling apps around asset mm -hmm. tracking. And if you think about the, uh, the internet of the last 10, 15 years, it's all been about digital asset um, uh, tracking and management, right? Whether you're talking Instagram or Facebook or uh, Spotify, all of those applications are actually digital asset management applications. So um, in, the, in the near term, uh, our chain um, starts there, and that's the kind of um, uh, DAP ecosystem that we imagine will be uh, will will take hold, but over time, uh, as as that uh, scales out, you know, in much the same way that <clears throat> you know Google started with fairly fairly low risk applications mm -hmm. and gradually expanded to higher and higher uh, risk applications, um, we can certainly see um, our chain uh, employed in in logistics kinds of applications, um, and and certainly a social telecommunication applications. And then, uh, but but if you start to look at uh, you know what it means to scale, um, uh, you know even even something like Facebook out to global scale with you know billions of users, each of which has you know hundreds of thousands of posts. In the blockchain world, uh, each one of those posts becomes a smart contract. So you're you're li literally talking about hundreds of trillions of smart contracts uh, uh, running wow. concurrently and. No blockchain uh, that I know of has has talked about that that kind of scope and scale in a decentralized setting, or an architecture that delivers that. So our chain has a path to uh, hardware architecture uh, for the uh, the smart contract execution and a very radical hardware architecture for the consensus. Hmm. So uh, that gives you both a kind of economic ecosystem and technological uh, roadmap, or at least a taste of one. Definitely. And uh, it's great to hear that, you know, you have a plan to be globally scalable because with music, data, there's just so much information. And the Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains right now have, you know, had a lot of scaling issues. So I'm curious, you know, is there a major differentiator uh, in the, the way that now our chain is able to scale past those blockchains scalability limits? And also... Now, do you have an idea of how scalable it will be in terms of uh, uh, transactions per second or, or so at the optimal performance level when it gets to its peak? Yeah. Uh, so, so again, we can talk about it in terms of each of the different um, uh, rollouts. So for this rollout, um, uh, you know, which is largely just uh, traditional software running, running on uh, today's hardware, um, uh, we're, in, we're in the midst of doing a, a couple of... Um, Sort of backlog updates, uh, and once those are done, so in about uh, let's say two months time from now, um, we'll be able to unthrottle the network. Right now, the network is throttled to just be a chain as opposed to a DAG. But once we un unthrottle the network, um, on traditional hardware, we should see you know like uh, like small hardware, um, we sh we should see you know something on the order of. Uh, three to ten thousand transactions per second. When we get it up to um, uh, the kinds of uh, uh, backbone nodes that we said we would need, at, you know, as early as twenty eight summer of twenty eighteen, we were sort of specking out the kind of nodes that we would need for the backbone of the chain. Uh, we should be able to see <coughs> uh, upwards of about forty thousand transactions per second. Wow. Uh, and um, yeah, so so I'm I'm still fully confident in that. And the differentiator is, of course, concurrency, mm -hmm. um, right? So uh, our platform should scale as you add more resources. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the that's the basic idea. Ethereum is sort of anti-scaling. As you add more resources, it slows down. So ours should scale in a near linear fashion as you add more resources. Um, that's the that's the big differentiator for this. Uh, instantiation of the architecture. Mm -hmm. When we move outward and replace the the Java VM with uh, with some hardware, then we should see uh, order of magnitude increase, uh, if not two orders of magnitude increase on those transaction speeds. And then when we have the the contemplated uh, consensus hardware, uh, we should we should see almost no time for the consensus. Um, and in which case we're we're talking three or four orders of magnitude. Still, uh, still a bit of a stretch to get to the kind of global Facebook 
you know, <laughs> trillions of smart contracts mm -hmm. running concurrently, but it's at least within striking distance at that point. And, you know, uh, some engineering innovations at, at that at that time frame can probably get us the rest of the way. Definitely. And you know, 40,000 is around uh, what Visa and MasterCard, at least for financial transactions, you know, what, what they sort of do. So that seems yeah. like it would be uh, more than adequate, uh, at least on the blockchain side in comparison. Um, and, you know, part of that scalability, is it is it because our chain is also based off of the proof of stake uh, consensus or the CBC as opposed to proof of work, uh, you know, with Bitcoin and Ethereum? Um, does that bring a major improvement to the scalability, but also the security and the other features of the blockchain? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. So so proof of stake is, is, a, is a big win uh, along a number of different um, axes. Uh, <laughs> one very basic one, you'll see this feature in, in just a few weeks, um, is um, that we don't have to go all the way back to the beginning of time. We actually have finality. Uh, and once you have finality, you can say, okay, this is the, this is the latest finalized state. And so that's the new genesis. So you don't have to, you don't have to go all the way back to the beginning of time, which means that validators, uh, uh which are the uh, proof of stake equivalent of miners, mm -hmm. um, can, can constantly compact their state. Whereas the proof of work state is ever growing, right? So, um, the longer those those networks run, the longer, uh, the bigger the storage uh, requirements are. But in the case of uh, in the case of a, uh, a, a consensus protocol with uh, finality, um, the state the state uh, the the storage requirement doesn't have to be um, any bigger than the um, the distance from the tip of the chain to the last finalized state never has to get bigger than that so there's a there's a cap on how large the state gets mm -hmm. uh, so that's one example and then and then uh, uh, the the biggest other example is is a concurrency right so we're running a dag which mean you know we can actually detect when there are transactions that conflict and we know what to do in that particular case either you impose an order or you let uh, let one of the uh uh, one of the competitors know that it lost, and so a transaction would have to be resubmitted. Mm -hmm. So that's a <clears throat> that's a that's a big, huge win, right? Because it means that we can uh, have many, many more transactions packed into a block, right? We don't have to uh, uh, sequentialize uh, in the same way that proof of work does. Yeah, that's a huge advantage, especially because looking at bitcoins blockchains getting into you know the terabytes of size and nobody can really even download it on their home computers because it's just too big so that final yeah. state seems like it's a game changer so uh with that staking and the finalized state uh is that live now or is it going live really soon uh, uh so the last finalized state has been always a part of the uh the protocol design uh and we're just now putting the finishing touches on the features so that people People can access it, and people can join uh, uh, join the network uh, over and above the cooperative nodes. And there's a handful of other external nodes. But we want to once we have that feature, we'll kind of open the floodgates um, with a big staking opportunity for other right. people to join in, uh, which I think will be a, a really um, you know we should make some make some hay out of it, celebrate, because <laughs> uh, then we'll start to have uh, you know a much more decentralized uh, um, uh, rendering of the protocol. Definitely. And with the staking, uh, stakers require you know, rev tokens, which are on the mainnet, uh, the Archain mainnet. Uh, I saw that the rev tokens were recently listed on MXC and on Hotbit, uh, which is great. So congratulations to that. You know, is there a further adoption plan for rev tokens moving forward? Yes. Although in, in general, the exchanges don't like us to mention which ones are going when because they want to sort of do all that kind of uh, management themselves and have AMAs and all kinds of events. So yes, there is fur there will be further listings, um, but I, I can't really speak to that uh, uh, in public, uh, and that that has to be up to the exchanges. Yeah, well, that's good to know. Um, and if there are viewers that are looking to follow along with our chain's updates and get involved with the community or the co-op, what is the best way for them to learn more? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for asking. So uh, I recommend everyone go to the website, uh, rchain.coop. That's R-C-H-A-I-N dot C-O-O-P. Um, that's the beginning. Then there's developer.rchain.coop uh, for developers who want to get involved. And if you really, really want to get um, uh, get in the mix, um, 
then please jo um, join our um, uh, community debrief uh, that happens on, on Zoom. And you can get that link um, from the website or from our Discord server. So, and that would be uh, another place to sort of jump in and become a part of the discussion. Awesome. Thank you so much, Greg. I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. All the best on the Archain project moving forward. Uh, it sounds like you guys are making a lot of great updates. So let's follow up in the near future. Uh, and all the best with Archain. Thank you so much. And uh, likewise, uh, all, all the best with your, your podcast. This is a, this is a great uh, resource for the community.